as they say, history repeats itself. And the Indian two-wheeler market truly exemplifies that given the number of brands that are making a comeback here. The most recent example of the same is YesD that has been resurrected by classic legends, the same company which sells Java models in India. Now YesD is back with not one or two, but as many as three motorcycles. And the one I'm riding today is the YesD Roadster. So this bike essentially competes against the likes of the Royal Enfield Meteor 350 and the Honda Highness CB350. So does it have the potential to give its existing rivals a run for their money? We try to answer that question by spending a brief amount of time with the new YesD Roadster. Besides the Roadster, we have also ridden the new YesD Scrambler off the road comprehensively. The detailed off-road review of the Scrambler will be up tomorrow. Visually, the YesD Roadster is an attractive motorcycle, more so than how it looks in the pictures. Lending it an old-school charm are multiple elements like a round headlamp, peanut-shaped fuel tank and pea-shooter-style exhaust. But the presence of alloy wheels and a lot of blacked-out components give it a contemporary touch. The motorcycle is available in five enticing color options, with three of them following an all-black theme and the other two bringing old-school chrome elements to the mix. I really like the way the YesD Roadster looks. But when it comes to quality and finishing of the overall bike, there's definitely some scope for improvement. Certain bits like the paint finish and quality of switchgear were acceptable. But as we looked closely, we could find uneven panel gaps around the switchgear and underseat panels. Then the edges of the engine cooling fins look shoddy and one of the fins had its edges chipped off a bit. These might not seem like major issues initially, but they surely make the bike's long-term reliability questionable. Now thanks to the low curb weight of 184 kgs, moving the YesD Roadster around is not that big a task. But one particular issue with this variant is that uh, because of the bar and mirrors, these keep hitting your hands every time you move the handlebar. And uh, additionally, now coming to the comfort part, when you mount the bike, it's not difficult because of the low 790mm of seat height and when you are seated, uh, the ergonomics are pretty neutral. You are sitting upright, the handlebar is within your easy reach and the foot pegs are slightly forward set. But you won't be getting a big bike feeling because of the small fuel tank and also these uh, fuel tank contours keep hitting your knees, especially if you are as tall as me, let's say 6 feet. Before you get going on the Roadster, you'll really appreciate the bassy exhaust note of this engine. Let's listen to it. Powering the YesD Roadster is the same 334cc single-cylinder liquid-cooled engine that does duty on the Java Perak. However, the brand has executed multiple changes for YesD, such as the inclusion of updated crankshaft, different connecting rods, tweaked cylinder head and some more. The resultant motor churns out 29.29 bhp of power and 29 Nm of peak torque. While the engine looks impressive on paper, things aren't all that rosy out on the road. To start with the good bits, the engine pulls vigorously as you cross 4000 rpm and there's a quick increment in momentum until it's red line. Progressing through gears is a quick affair too, given the sleekness of the gearbox and short gear ratios. Moreover, thanks to the rev-happy nature of the engine, redlining the bike in every gear and hooning around is quite engaging and fun. What plays a spoil sport here though are the vibrations that creep in post 5000 rpm and keep on increasing as the revs climb. It all starts with a slight buzzing on the handlebar, followed by foot pegs 
and culminating on the seat. Although the engine doesn't feel much stressed even at 100 kmph, high vibrations accompanied by some engine noise hampers the overall experience. Not to nitpick, but the throttle response is abrupt too. At times, I felt that the engine's response time and my throttle inputs didn't match, with the former lagging behind. Talking about the handling, changing directions on the Roadster at slow speeds feels seamless, mainly due to its light weight and wide handlebar. But as the speeds rise and you encounter a set of corners, the Roadster feels vague. Now given its cruiser-centric geometry, we weren't expecting it to be a fast corner cover. But there seemed to be a lack of connection between the front and the rear while cornering, and it also lacked steering response. That said, the MRF tyres deliver a good amount of grip. The Roadster truly impressed us with its braking setup. The sharp bite from the brake calipers and decent lever feel meant the bike shed speeds in no time. It's the same with the rear as well, which delivers a nice balance of bite and progression. The ABS2 intervened only at the time it was needed the most. The suspension setup did an admirable job through minor undulations like stones and potholes. Even at high speeds, the motorcycle felt pretty planted and comfortable. However, ride it a little fast over a rumbler and the front kicks back with a nasty jolt. The rear does the same but with lesser intensity. A little plusher suspension setup would have been really appreciated. As old a brand as ESD is, the feature list is equally modern. It gets a full LED headlamp and tail lamp, dual channel ABS, hazard lamps and a fully digital instrument cluster. The single pod round LCD shows a generous amount of data like distance to empty, gear position indicator besides the basic information. While that's commendable, what isn't is the extreme lack of visibility under bright sun. The ESD Roadster is a likeable motorcycle for a few reasons like punchy acceleration, decent handling, sharp brakes and it is comfortable as well. But it can also do better in some areas like the fit and finish can be better, the ride quality needs to be plusher and the engine needs to be more refined and consistent. So to answer the question that we asked in the beginning, is it ready to outshine its existing rivals? Well, maybe not yet.